Peace and blessings. Sister Tara back with another video. It's been a while since you guys have heard from me. Um, so I figured it was time. Um, and prayfully, uh, sister out there will be edified by this video. Now, as you can see by the title, Are You a Good Wife? This video isn't particularly just for married women, but for single women as well. Um, so I'm just gonna get right into it. <clears throat> Are you a good wife? Uh, a lot of women would consider themselves because they have been married for X amount of years or, um, uh, you know, been in a marriage for over five years or 10 years or 15 years that they are assume that they are good wives. Um, you know, when was the last time you actually asked your husband, you know, husband, are you happy with me? Um, am I a good wife to you? Are you, do you see anything in me that could be changed or fixed or something that, um, you know, that you might want to see more of me you know when was the last time you asked your husbands that wives most of women who are married assume that they're already good wives without having to ask their husband because society teaches us that you know women love men the way that they feel they should love the man the husband um according to their standards of how they want to love on their husbands. And um, men are very simple, black and white, you know. Usually they are very easy to understand. And when the man doesn't display that, you know, or give you the, um, it's a little windy out here, so forgive me if it's a little muffled. Um, and when the man doesn't show you the what's the word I'm looking for the uh, the the reaction that you were hoping for wives then to according to your standard as to how you wanted to love him now all of a sudden you are you know giving him the silent treatment and you're upset because he didn't react to your standard of the way that he should be loved um, most men are very simple like I said black and white and if you look most men when they say when, when asked the question you know what do you want in a relationship or in a marriage and the number one answer is respect the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 5 and I believe the last verse um, it says let me just get there really quick Ephesians, oh, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 5 and the last verse it says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Um, reverence, we know, means respect. And so with that scripture, we see that women like to be want to be loved and men want to be respected. Now, a man's way of loving is being a provider you know and obviously he loves you enough to provide for you uh being righteous teaching you raising you in the word and i'm talking about righteous men now you know ones that live according to the scriptures um so you know do you respect your husbands wives uh, um even as, even as, as something as you know getting something to eat something simple like that where let's say you both are working class people and your husband decides okay well my wife is working late I'm gonna get that I'm gonna bring home um, some pizza and you know he gets home before you and then you show up and now you're like well I don't want pizza you know I don't want any pizza in a way, I, I could see why a man would consider that to be disrespectful. He thought of of you to bring home some food. So, it, even in small things, you know, or or even in big things. If your husband was to say to you right now, hey, you know what? I'm going to sell this house and we're going to go buy some land and we're going to go off grid. We're going to start first. We're going to build everything. We're going to homestead. We're going to give up this modern luxury lifestyle what what will your response be wife 
will you be like okay or are you going to give him the silent treatment are you going to huss and fuss with him about the many reasons as to why you do not want to live this lifestyle or why you will not live this lifestyle and how you don't want to leave your your comfortable home um so you know little and big things do you respect your husband do you reverence your husband as mentioned in the scripture do you reverence your husband and then like i mentioned earlier you know who determines your value as a wife woman you know do you we know in today's society that a lot of women would you know and do say oh i'm a good wife you know according to what you have to say but if you were to ask the man and he give an honest opinion without you passing judgment on him he might say something different and a lot of single women out there say the same thing oh um i'm a good wife but you haven't you aren't in any successful marriage you aren't in you know a, a marriage at all you aren't even a wife so how can you even say that or make that statement that you are a good wife so a husband is the one that determines whether or not you are a good wife so hallelujah for our men our righteous men who are guiding and leading um, our women in the path of righteousness and teaching them and raising them and nurturing them and nourishing them as the scripture says that a husband's duty is to his wife and his family so <clears throat> you know are you a good help me are you a true help me to him in the beginning when the most high Yah created the woman he created her to be an help me for adam um are you a good help me do you go along with what your the with what the vision the most high has given your husband or do you you know find yourself doing your own thing like your husband has an idea to go off grid eventually but you are still stuck in the modern lifestyle and you know you haven't made any plans you haven't helped him you haven't assisted in his in his journey to wanting to go off grid or even starting a business if he says hey you know what um i think i want to quit my job and i want to be my own boss i want to you know for example start my own food truck are you going to support him or are you going to tell him the many reasons as to why he shouldn't and how you know tell him why his job that he has now is comfortable and stable and there are no risks you know so are you really a true help me help me in fulfilling his vision that the most high yah has given him are you fruitful with your husband according to this uh, Western mindset you know when you have one or two children then it's like at a stop but the scripture says to be fruitful and multiply you know have you been fruitful to your husband there are women out here who have given their husbands one child and then they cut the tubes or um, you know decide that they're not gonna have any more children but you ask the husband what he feels you know does he want some more children and he says yes but my wife uh, done already made the decision for us so yeah we we only had one so um you know are you also raising his children in righteousness are you instilling instilling what he is teaching you and your family when he has to go to work or doing something on the land or out you know fellowshipping or you know whatever if he if your husband isn't around are you instilling his program into the children or is it the good cop bad cop um i get one way with mom and then one way with dad you know what i mean or is it completely all well-rounded according to the man of the house's vision that the most High gave him are you helping to fulfill that you know so all these things you know fall under that question are you a good wife how can you say that you are a good wife when 
you know you haven't assisted your husband in any of these areas you don't respect him you don't want to help him fulfill his vision you are just and I, I say this respectfully you know you are just there uh, keeping the bed warm you know cooking and cleaning those are things that can a man can buy a man can buy a cook and a cleaner and you know a man can even buy someone to warm his bed but what things that a real woman a good wife would bring is reverence a true feminine energy peace the scripture says that a wife is a pillar of rest let me get there and Sirach chapter 36 and verse 24 Sirach also known as Ecclesiasticus in the book of Apocrypha chapter 36 and verse 24 it says he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession a help like unto himself a pillar of rest are you a pillar of rest to your husband or do you nag your husband about little things big things small things medium things you know are you always complaining about what you want you know if your husband forgot your birthday or y'all anniversary or Valentine's Day or he didn't bring you home a gift or things like that would you still reverence your husband the same way would you still offer him rest and peace in his household or would you again give him the silent treatment give him the cold shoulder argue with him even belittle your husband you know because he didn't acknowledge those things and when you come to the faith, you know, we put away those those pagan um, worships anyway. We don't we don't celebrate Valentine's Day and things like that. We celebrate life. You know, we celebrate marriage in its totality, living and breathing the word of the most high through our actions, you know, through the way that we respect one another, the way that we love our family, the way that we raise our family. You know, this is this is how we this is how we live. This is how we display good husbandry, good, good husband, a good wife. So, you know, also, again, being a pillar of rest, you know, are you patient with your husband? Are you kind to him? Are you gentle with him? Or are or you only those things when he's doing his job? There's a there's a thing that's floating around that women will naturally follow when a man is um, ordering his household, you know. But according to the scriptures, woman, you are commanded to submit to that husband regardless of, you know, where he stands in his walk. You know, and, and, and you married him. Nine times out of ten, you knew exactly the type of man he was when you married him. So, um you know now now you are so righteous that when you know he's out of order you find yourself out of order or you know are you staying in line as the most high commanded you to to submit to your husband to obey your husband okay my battery died and I had to change it so uh, right being a possession to your husband obeying your husband as mentioned in first Peter chapter 3 and verse 2 where Sarah obeyed Abram you know modern-day women think of those terms possession oh that's toxic masculinity obey oh uh, that woman is being oppressed women that live this faith and that are under righteous headship you know, we're not being held captives. You know, if we were being oppressed or abused, you know, I'm sure it's it's not that hard to get out of. But we are in agreement with our husbands. We are in agreement with the way the scripture orders the household, that the way it's supposed to be. So, you know, those those arguments are, you know, pretty <laughs> um, petty when you think about you know why people will say uh possession uh that's you know toxic masculinity that's just a that's just a
poisonous word, you know, meant to teach and enslave women that, you know, oh, they don't need men. You know, when in fact, we do need men. We need husbands. Our women need husbands. Our sisters need their husbands, you know, to guide you, protect you. All of our foremothers were wives. And the ones that weren't, in some in some way, when they were mentioned in the scriptures, like Judith or um, Naomi, who later called herself Mara, there they were widows. They lost their husbands. So you know, our foremothers uh, and, and and the biblical women in the Bible, they were married women, and they were good wives. You know. The scripture says that a man and a wife, a, a man and a wife that agree together. This is what is beautiful. Ecclesiasticus again, chapter 25 and verse 1. Oh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 25. And three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before Yah and men, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. Again, you know, reverencing your husband, do you help to fulfill his vision or are you going against everything that he is setting forth in his household? You know, do you have your own agenda? Um, so yes, uh, being a good wife. And you can read in Ecclesiasticus chapter 25. That whole chapter speaks about a, a, a good wife. And then chapter 26 speaks about the wicked woman. That a wicked woman is given as a portion unto the wicked man. So if you wife are, or women are saying that, um, oh, yeah, well, he's this and he's that. He's not obedient. You have to look, sit back and really uh, self-examine yourself. Because the scripture says that he gives... A wicked woman to a portion to a wicked man so if you're calling your husband wicked or you're calling you know your significant other uh, unrighteous in some form of way then you need to look at yourself because you might be then that way too and again um, even if your husband is not in order or he's not following the laws or he might have backslid in some sort of way the scripture says to continue your walk that you may save your husband it's in paul's teaching um i forget the scripture but paul says that you know to because who knows if you'll be able to save your husband just by your actions just by your talk by the way that you carry yourself being a faithful servant to your husband all the while being a faithful servant to the most high God. and that word too being a servant to, to the husband being a servant but you know Abraham called himself a servant the, the, our forefathers submitted themselves and called themselves servants to the father as well to the most high yah and women say oh yeah well yah is my head he is the, the leader of me and you know but how do we know that you know how do we know that when you're not even submitting to your earthly husband you're not even reverencing your earthly husband. So how can you then serve the one true God of Israel if you're not even serving the one he has as a head over you? You know, also we see that um, a lot of single women and single sisters have a lot of marital advice to give but are not in successful marriages, never been in one. So, you know, just be mindful of what you listen to women. You know, be careful out there, sisters, about what you speak about as well, because you never know who you might save, who you could edify, just based off of your walk and your talk. But, um, you know, I just wanted to give a quick little video. Um, just kind of speaking as briefly as I can um, about, you know, asking you ask yourselves the question, are you a good wife? When was the last time you asked your husband? 
If you watch this video, go ask him, see what he says. Don't feel offended by if he says, shoot, I think you need to work on your cooking or I think you need to work on the way that you speak to me or I think you need to work on the way you dress. Don't be offended. He's telling you exactly what he would like to see in you to better your relationship with him, better your value as a wife so that you can actually go forth and say, you know, I am a good wife. And women being in reverence, you know, modern day women just are so loud and clamorous, you know. Oh. Whereas, you know, a good wife, she is displaying good fruit by her actions, by her submission to her husband, by her reverencing her husband, the way that she wear, raises his children, not being loud, you know, speaking positively, speaking um, scripturally, edifying others, trying to win souls for the kingdom come, you know, because that's what it's all about, you know, everybody coming to the true knowledge and wisdom of the scriptures and turning and repenting away from sin so um i just wanted to share that really quickly and in hopes that this video will edify somebody and i'm sure there'll be another part to this video because i know there are a lot of scriptures that i'm leaving out as to you know how you can be a good wife or are you a good wife so shalom peace and blessings thank you guys for watching